So welcome back to The Bubble, and I'm delighted to be back sharing all these inspiring women's stories with you. So I'm kicking off the series with American author Susan Burrell, who has just written the book, The Empowered Life. She's also a podcast host, Empowering Chats, and she is a uh, presenter and guest speaker and really helps people who are at crossroads in life through her intuitive healing and offerings of spiritual guidance. So I'm delighted for Susan to join me today. And after digging a little bit deeper and reading more about Susan, her story, um, her journey really resonates with me and I'm sure lots of women will be able to relate to this one. So I am delighted to have Susan join us today, um, all the way from California. Good afternoon, or good morning good, to you. Well, good morning, and I'm in Ventura by the beach, and it's a very foggy morning. Oh, how nice, though. How have you coped in lockdown? Have you, are you still in lockdown? Uh, or are you well, about? after kicking and screaming and stomping my feet for a few weeks, <laughs> uh, you know, because I have definite opinions about what this actually is, um, I'm coming into more of a surrendered state about just allowing my personal emotions to move through me so I can be present with mm -hmm. um, the people I get to kind of interact with yeah. and plus with my clients who are who are going through anxiety and depression and stress and fear you know the fear yeah. thing is yeah I think the fear thing is the pandemic yeah it's not an easy but, time at all no it's not and it's got a lot of people <clears throat> literally by the throat you know, and um, they can't because because we cannot figure this out. This is like the biggest spiritual practice any of us could mm -hmm. go through if we choose to really recognize that this is about learning more of the truth of who we are individually, so we can come out of this when we can, yeah. uh, more empowered to really be the light in the world and not the fear and not the darkness. So, That's and I say all that cause I'm, I'm a, an intuitive and a, <clears throat> a healer. Yes. And, yeah. I mean, I said in, in your bio, you know, I didn't know where to start with you because you, you are an author um, of your new book, the uh, um, empowered life. And you've also a podcast host and um, you know, you, you're a public speaker. How do you describe yourself with different hats? I, I see myself as, you know, those, those carnival people of, you know, the last century with the poles and their spinning plates and their juggling. That's kind of how I see myself. But it's, uh, it's, um, it's about creative freedom for me now in my later years, mm. my earlier years. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't believe in myself. I was taught very carefully um, to not believe in myself in a very um, subterfuge kind of, you know, clandestine way, you know. Yeah. And so as I got older, especially in my late, this third chapter of my life or whatever you want to call it, um, I began to really get out of that enmeshment of feeling less than and devalued and, and really but, but that's because I did some very deep inner work uh, to really come out loving and respecting myself more than I ever have in my life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's the work that's in my book, Live an Empowered Life yeah. and Journey. It's, so I, my, I come from a family of writers. I didn't realize I could write anything. And now I'm just having mm -hmm. so much fun. You know, I just ask uh, the wisdom within me, what do I need to discuss today or what what's coming up and I usually get a download and I just write it out you know it's not some people are like well what happens when you have writer's block I don't I just walk away from the desk then and go do my other thing which is you know yeah. working with clients or recording um meditations I have that's part of the work I do I did with myself when I found myself caught in some muck I found that I had to sit down with that muck and usually a, a, a guided meditation of some kind would come in. You know, I would just begin to see and hear and visualize and work my way through it. And so now I have lots of um, recorded guided meditations that are on an app called Insight Timer. Mm. And um, yeah, so it's kind of, I'm in this like new, I'm in this. How do I even explain this, Rachel? 
I'm in the divine flow of life for the first time in my life, you know, mm -hmm. and I had to work really hard to get into that flow of life. Yeah. And there's days where I get sidetracked or I, you know, feel less than again. I mean, even though you do the work, it's an ongoing thing, yes. right? Yeah, I and mean, I think that's that's the thing. People think that once you get to this state um, of, of finding you of really finding the true self, that, that it's a done deal and you don't have to do any more work. But it's an ongoing journey, isn't it? Ongoing journey. This lifetime and probably many lifetimes. It's just mm. an ongoing journey. And it's and that's why to me, uh, every time I want to get off the bus, if you want, <laughs> you know, oh let me just sit down and I'll eat bonbons and watch you know, TV, which we're actually getting to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but every time I wanted to, I realized then I would have to just go back out there and which means go within and continue that inner journey of uh, enlightenment, that inner journey of uh, raising consciousness within myself and on the planet. And, and with this whole mishigosh that's happening right now, you know, this mm -hmm. lockdown, um, it, now is the time. Yeah. And now is the time. And, and there's, there, you know, a lot of uh, new thought leaders, light leaders, spiritual teachers, they all say now is the time, right? And mm -hmm. that's been happening for eons. Now yeah. is the time. Now is the, yeah. But I'm telling you, now is the time. Because I wrote, a, I posted on my wall, I have lots of post-its, right? And what I, I heard really clearly is who do you want to be when you come out of this? Do you want to be better? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I want, I, I want to be better. I want to, yeah. I want to be whatever that looks like better. So, yeah. Cause what strikes me is you've turned some really negative situations and emotions and feelings and, and in your life go through a, a similar thing to me with divorce that really is life changing, but you've turned, you, you managed to find your way out of that with such insight that looking back now, I wish I'd had the same insight as you to get through that journey Oh, well, thank you. How difficult did it get and how did you get yourself out of it? Uh, well, um, I, I've been on a spiritual quest since I was like 17, 18. Hmm. So I already had accumulated um, tons of skill sets, you know, and a counselor. I've been a counselor for blah, 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 20 years or something hmm. and uh, 25 and so the skill sets that I would use with my clients, I just used all of them on me. And, and, and um, because it, I thought I had almost escaped the divorce debacle, you know, it's like, oh, we've made 28 years and aren't we great? No. And all of a sudden, these women who had been divorced came flooding into my life, you know, because where's, yeah. if I'm not married, where's my tribe, right? And yeah. so for whatever reason, and my girlfriends who were still married, they couldn't understand what I was going through. You know, it was like, wow. Yeah. So I started hanging out with other divorced women and I noticed, you know, a bottle and a half of wine later, they were still embittered after having been divorced 15 years ago. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to be like that mm -hmm. because I knew I had a second half of life that um, I wanted to live fully since it felt like my first half, I, I wasn't living my life as me. Yeah. I was living my life in conjunction with someone, you know, in yeah. partnership with someone. And I wanted to, I wanted Susan to have her turn. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens a lot with women that go yeah, through definitely. midlife. Yeah. You know, yeah. Once you cross that halfway point, it's like, okay, my turn. Yeah. It's like we give ourselves permission all of a sudden mm -hmm. to really think about ourselves and what we want to achieve in life. Yeah. And divorce kind of kicks you, you know, out of the nest, right? Mm. It kicks you out of that comfort zone. And so for me, um, I, I didn't realize it was happening until I actually chose to file. <clears throat> and, um, and what I mean by that is I kept trying to make it right. I kept trying to make it right. And it wasn't ever going to be right. And mm. it probably wasn't right from the beginning of the marriage. And I stayed 28 years. Mm. Oh, my holy God. So... I was shattered. My, my understanding of who I was was completely shattered. And I mean like shattered glass, different colors all over the floor. And, mm -hmm. and I felt like during the divorce, it was so contentious. I felt like I was crawling on my belly through that glass almost every day. And after a while of, you know, the feeling sorry for myself and running my story to friends and, and crying and sobbing and going through a, several boxes of Kleenex a day, I, I thought, you know, again, 
how, how do I want to come out of this? Mm -hmm. I want to come out better than I've ever been in my life. And so I started really investigating, do I love myself? How do I love myself? What does that look like and feel like within my body? And my body just reacted to everything because I think my body was finally saying, oh, good God, she finally paid attention. Yeah. You know, because your body signals, uh, because we're energetic beings, if we do not address any emotions that are, uh, if we don't allow those emotions to move through us, if we don't, take a look at them and understand them and integrate or release them. They mm -hmm. download in our body energetically and then they become diseases. Yeah. So uh, I knew I didn't want to have that, but my body was, I was hiving for an entire year, head to toe. I'm kid, I kid uh, you not. So uncomfortable without, with, I maybe had two days of no hives for an entire year. Gosh. My body was releasing rage. I, you know, I would get dizzy if I thought of my ex-husband or saw him. I would just get really dizzy and mm -hmm. not be able to drive or what. And so I, I really, all those reactions, because I had a strong group of spiritual uh, friends that were also teachers and, and um, light leaders around me. Um, I, I had friends that could reflect to me, okay, no, you're not crazy. This is what he really said. Or, you know, mm. it's okay if you're dizzy, go take a nap or, mm. you know, that kind of stuff. Or just to make me laugh, you know, to crack me up. Yeah. Because humor, had everything had left, you know. And, mm. and the gift, and I'm so surprised I'm saying this, Rachel, but the gift for me was to really dig deep into uh, my spiritual practice again, opening up that toolbox that I had and then applying it to me you know, like a salve and, um, and the gift really was the divorce mm -hmm. because I came out loving and respecting myself more than I ever had. Yeah. I came out respecting the work that I do, which I had always just kind of fluffed off. Oh, you know, it's okay. I'll just, you know, I'll just let you have a session for free. Yeah. You know, giving myself away constantly. And so, um, I've had to really uh, look at the value I am, uh, the insight, right? Mm -hmm. the, the love that I am, the wisdom that I am, the, the energy that I am, and accept it. And once I began to really accept it inside, then I was able to move into the outer world more. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, that's true self-love, isn't it? Yeah, that's really that. That's really the the, the heart of what self love is about. Is about accepting and loving yourself, and rebuild and allowing time to build yourself back up again. And so many people, we don't know how to do that. We, we've not. We haven't been taught that at university or kindergarten, yeah. or we haven't necessarily even been taught that in our family of origin. Mm. I know I wasn't taught that. Yeah. So you know, I guess the good news is you get to make your life up however you want. Mm. And if you want it to be a good, healthy, empowered, fun, creative life, you get to have that. And if you mm. want it to be a doldrum or a victim life, you get to have that. Yeah. So when you were making the progress as you were coming back out of the, out of the kind of dark days, how did you stop the fear from kind of eating away at you into going into your new life because I think so many women that I talk to have the dreams and aspirations and can see that they want to try and make those next steps forward but then the fear blocks them and stops them from doing that that's a really good question so let me um <clears throat> again I think that was the gift of my divorce I had always I had already been um because I've already been doing the work that I'm doing now yeah um and I had been affirmed over and over that this is the work I'm supposed to do, not go be a sales clerk somewhere or, you know, a waitress mm. again. Oh, and, uh, but that fear came up of, oh my gosh, where, how's my, where's my income? You know, oh my gosh, mm. how, how do I sever that half of myself, right? My ex-husband, who I thought was a part of me. Mm. And I got to tell you, it was the best thing I did when I cut that all off mm. because then I found myself the original me that I was born into. Mm. Um, but the fear 
is I, I began to learn that um, in order to come out whole, in order to come out loving myself more, um, I had to face the fear. And so I, that's what I attempt to do now when it comes up. I have to face it. And oftentimes, um, when you face that fear, you can see that it's really just a small part of you that's trying to keep you safe, right? Yeah. And it's a small part. It's not a big bugaboo guy. It's a small little thing within you that's saying, it's, I, I'm scared. And when, when you can recognize that, or when I do, then I can, I can um, you know, comfort it or say, well, well we're still going to do this anyway, but you're going to yeah. be okay. You know, it's, you're really going to be okay. And I do a lot of that kind of work in, in meditation, you know, or journaling. Journaling is really helpful for me. Yeah, I've just started doing that. I've started writing gratitude lists at the end of the day um, and journaling. And I think it has really made a difference. It has kept me just grounded with, with yes. reality, really, of what's been going on every day and the yes. things that are important. Mm -hmm. And I, can I share some, uh, a good journaling prompt? Yeah is uh, you might ask yourself in the morning, or your higher self really, because that's who's writing in your journal, um, what do I need to know today? And just do mm. stream of consciousness writing. What do I need to know about my day today? Mm. And see what happens, I, yeah. you know. No, I'll try that. So mm. you've now used all your experiences and, and your spiritual practice uh, and your intuitive you, you've, you've now brought that to, to the forefront to be able to help other people that are at the same crossroads in life, haven't you? So how does your work kind of, how has it evolved? You've, you've written the book. So what would people be able to expect from the book? I mean, I've, I've had a look at it. It looks brilliant. I'm going to get it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, it is, I, I'm very much, as you've been hearing, I'm very much about doing the inner work. So this is not a, I had several, um, clients and, and uh, colleagues say, oh, I can't wait to get your book. I'm going to read it. I'm like, oh, it's not, it's not a read. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a self-help read and you might get a gem. It's, it's a, let's go on this journey together and hunker down and do the inner work. And um, it interfaces, it goes back and forth with my website because there's videos and guided meditation. So all mm -hmm. my skill sets uh, are available when you work this book. So, so I'm there all the time with the individual working the book. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had the great fortune to, uh, current, to lead two uh, book studies, and I'm starting another one virtually on August 4th um, of the book. And, and whenever I do teach a class, or I, I do the work myself. So mm -hmm. I've, now, I've now gone through it twice again, and, and it's amazing what else pops up. Um, so well, like one of, one of the prompts, uh, there's lots of affirmations in the book to work. So it, I crafted it. So you're going to, you're going to begin kind of a gentle ride and then you're going to dive deep and then you're going to come up for air and then you're going to dive deep again, you know, until mm -hmm. you can get to a place where toward the end of the book, you get to rewrite your purpose mm -hmm. in life and come out of the book with a, a, a real conscious purpose yeah. um which is a spiritual purpose because i am activating light leaders that's my mission i found mm. out <laughs> so when so, did you find that when did you find that purpose and what uh, was there a tipping point where you thought actually yeah this is exactly what i meant to be doing so i am shaking my head because i it wasn't like i chose this do you know what i'm saying yeah it's not like i went okay what's my mission in life and i wrote down an outline oh and it's that no i Oh, like 15, 18 years ago, I was getting my master's degree in consciousness and I kept hearing conduit for spirit, conduit for spirit. I'm like, oh, what? And because I was really trying to open up and, and allow that infinite divine wisdom within me to A, come in and, and, and repopulate, but B, uh, recognize it and, and begin to be guided by it. Mm -hmm. And so when I was hearing conduit for spirit, which I had to look up conduit and conduit means um, a natural passage passageway, but it also means to lead or guide to a, a result. 
And, and so that had been my mission for a while, just to be a conduit for spirit. And that's what I would do. I would open up uh, before clients or classes to listen within, and then I could guide or teach. But then with the, this whole lockdown, um, my meditation practice shifted again. Mm -hmm. And um, one morning, well, I was asking, what's mine to do? That's a good question to ask when you're journaling too. What mm -hmm. is mine to do? Not what am I supposed to do for everybody else, but ask your inner higher self, mm -hmm. really, what are you here to do? And I heard clearly activate light. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's kind of, hmm, you know, and I wasn't quite, I was working towards being ready to be out in the forefront. I've been working towards being ready to be out in the forefront for years, right? Yeah. For decades. Yeah. Um, but the activate light, and I was like, activate what light? My light? And, and I heard very clearly within myself, activate light leaders, support other light leaders who are awakening during this time mm -hmm. on the planet um, to be exactly who they are. You know, that doesn't mean you have to go off, you know, on your steed to, you know, save the world but just to be exactly who you are in your family of origin or at your workplace or in your relationship. Yeah. And, and the more, so that's what I'm teaching now. And, 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 and on any quest, right. You know, if you want to get into the mythical on any quest, the quester goes through transmutation and transformation mm -hmm. because that's the purpose of the quest. Right. Yeah. Not to find the Holy grail. Yeah but to go on the quest. And so mm. that's, that's really what's happening for me right now is currently. And what about the people that you do help? Is there a common theme between all these people? Is it mostly women or do you do men and women? I mostly work with uh, women. I mostly work with women who have gone through divorce mm. or are going through divorce and they really want to heal. And, and most of my clients re reflect what I went through. You know, they yeah. don't know themselves. I have a, a stellar client who said, I never knew that I had a choice about loving myself. Hmm. So why do, you, why do you think we do lose ourselves then in society? It does seem to be a common theme, doesn't it? That women get to their forties and fifties and, and kind of come to this awakening of, you know, I need to find myself. I've lost myself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm praying and knowing that the current generation of women will not go through that. Hmm. That they're going to know themselves sooner, but I think our, our what, what what we're witnessing now in our generation is a closure of an old story, an old paradigm, and that's right. that is the patriarchal. Women should be seen and not heard. Hmm. Women stand behind their man. Women stay at home. Or if you go out in the workplace, you come back and you do the laundry and cook the meals and clean yeah. up and put the kids to bed. Really? Mm -hmm. So this is a very ancient paradigm. It goes back two or 3,000 years where we, that's when, when women had the power and the patriarchy decided they were going to take charge. That's when uh, you, you, if you study history and, and, uh, ancient wisdoms, you'll see women in high, high places of leadership being um, undermined, mm -hmm. having their power or their wealth mm -hmm. confiscated until the patriarchal belief system had absolute, I'd say 95% control of everyone. And what we're watching now with, the his, with this pandemic, if you pay, if are paying attention, a lot of those paradigms are falling away. And women, women are the ones that are going to lead us into yeah. the light. Yeah. Women are the ones that are going to lead us into how the new way of living, the new mm -hmm. system for living is going to be. And I'm not saying men aren't going to be a part of it, but it's going to be awakened men, not men that continue to do the good old boy club thing. Because, yeah. you know, it, 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 yeah. it, it's, it's dead and they're still beating it with a stick, right? Mm -hmm. To try and get some life out of it. Yeah. But when we come out of this pandemic, it will be the women that are leading. And that's, 
And I think that our generation, we were suppressed and we came from generations of women being suppressed, Mm -hmm. disallowed, unseen, keep your mouth shut, that kind of stuff. Um, So we couldn't, we would hit midlife. All that job that was society's description of how women are supposed to be in the world was complete, right? Yeah. Got married, raised my kids. Maybe I went to university. Maybe Mm -hmm. I had a job. But now halfway through, it's like, and that's why women wake up and go, holy moly, who am I? And I'm tired of doing what everybody else tells me to do. Yeah. And oftentimes, uh, I've had a conversation with several women on my podcast. Oftentimes, and I'm sure this is true of what you talk about too, Rachel, that we hit that midpoint and like me, it took a battering Mm -hmm. to wake me up. Yeah. I had a yearning, you know, I had a divine urge within me to be more than I was, Mm -hmm. but I got battered mentally, emotionally, and energetically to wake up and stop with the old. Yeah. And I think a lot of women go through that. Yeah, I do. I think that really, that's something that really resonates with me. And it was something, it is that yearning and knowing mm-hmm. that actually deep down inside you, there's something that was trying to get out and wanted mm-hmm. to, to be who you knew you could be. And it's about finding your way through that, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And, it, and finding your way through is different for everyone. Yeah. But there is, a, there is uh, I believe, uh, a consistent focus if you allow it. And that focus is what we were talking about earlier, focusing on that divine urge, Mm. not not what your head's telling you, but what your heart's telling you and allowing that to begin to inform you, your wisdom within, because all the answers we are asking for reside right within us. Because if you uh, align with your higher self, if you align with the infinite, then all your answers are right inside you and you have that's why journaling and 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 meditating silent meditation is so important because that's how you can hear Mm -hmm. and that's also why in this lockdown right in this lockdown this is the huge opportunity to really listen to what your soul is asking you to be Mm -hmm. yeah and is that where your moral compass comes in because i know you do lots of work about people finding their moral compass (laughs) Is that where that fits in with that as well? Well, that's funny that you asked me that because um, that <laughs> actually came about. I have a backstory with that. Uh, and yeah, and the answer is yes. Um, the backstory is I was in yet another lawyer's office because my ex husband mm-hmm. was doing shady what he was doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, the lawyer had this compass on his wall. And I was looking around because I'm, again, I'm just observant, I guess. And I saw the compass and, and, well, he's trying to tell me, and it's a man, right? He's trying to tell me what to do. I'm like, I said, well, you know, uh, what's that compass about? I said, do you, do you sail or, or what is that? He goes, no, that's, that's my moral compass. I was like, huh? What, what, what does that mean? He said, well, there's only two, po- there was eight points on the compass, by the way, but there's only right. two points. There's right and there's wrong. And I went, uh-oh. <laughs> and I, I said, I said, you know, there's so many other points there. What else do they mean to you? He goes, just right and wrong. You know, mm. I'm right. They're wrong. I went, okay, there's the division, yeah. the divisiveness, us against them, me against you. This yeah. is what we're seeing in the world right now. If yeah. you have a mask on or yeah. you don't, mm. and if you don't have a mask on, you must be infecting me. You know, it's all that. Mm. And that is old patriarchy. That is an old paradigm. So I... Uh, I went home and of course me being me, I sat down and I was like, okay, but in my mind, it, if he only had two POVs, right? He was being a disservice to his clients because there were so many other points mm-hmm. he could bring into his business yeah. to inform him so he could have a better outcome than right or wrong for his clients. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's where that came from. I, I, I sat down and and, um, figured out what my, what the points on my moral compass were. Mm -hmm. And I knew a couple of them already. I mean, my, my, my biggest one is integrity. Um, Having, having come out of a a narcissistic relationship 
integrity has always been important to me from yeah. the time I was a child um, to the point where I really don't even tell white lies anymore because if I do, it comes back to bite me because I've <laughs> stepped out of integrity. Yeah. Um, but there's other points on my compass like love and creativity and compassion. And, um, and it was a really healthy exercise so that now I've got, you know, if I step, like I said about integrity, if I, if I'm not in alignment with the love that I choose to be, I, I notice it and I, I get back into alignment. If I'm not being the compassion I choose to be, you know, like judging everybody over there, I, I recognize, okay, I, I need to realign with that Mm. point on my compass. So you obviously you deal with so many different people and you're you're the, the facilitator that helps people get to that next point. Do you have somebody as well for your for your journey? Absolutely. That will be, yeah. Absolutely. In fact, I just saw her yesterday, one of one of the people that helps me. Yeah. Um I have mentors. I have mentors mm-hmm. on the unseen side of life as well that um I I continually deeply appreciate. Yeah. Um but I do have mentors and healers that I work with consistently. Because um, <clears throat> the muck that is mine gets jammed, right, it, energetically. Yeah. But also because I work with people, I get their stuff. So it's, yeah. it's important to clear all, all that stuff. Because of being, we're all energetic beings. And when we are out in the world around other people, um, we have what I call drive-bys, you know, you can go to the grocery store. Well, well, you still can, right? Yeah. Go to the grocery store and you're walking down an aisle and somebody, if you're not aware, somebody you pass by may just go, oh, good, I can give her that. And, and this isn't conscious, right? This is not a, yeah. a thought form that, oh, I'm going to dump my garbage in her cart or on yeah. her body. But that's what happens. You know, notice when you go to, when you can, Go to an airport. I, when I walk through an airport, I, there is so much muck around energetically. And I'm like, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh. And I, you know, but this is true for everybody. It's not just mm-hmm. me. I'm not just the, mm-hmm. the woo-woo person yeah. that gets the, everybody. And, and, and so that's why it's also important for your self-care of um, either seeing a healer, working with a healer, or making sure you uh, take a bath mm-hmm. to just wash away that stuff or get a massage when you can, that kind of stuff, because it helps um, release that energy that's not yours, so you can really uh, be in tune with you. Yeah. So if somebody was in a position where they were struggling and they they knew that they wanted to make changes, what would be the first step that you would recommend that they start to do for themselves? Would it be meditation? Would it be going right back to basics? Uh, Yeah, meditation. I usually start my clients. uh, So part, my clients, when they work with me, develop their own spiritual practice. And um, I'm not here to say you've got to do, you know, Mm. these things. I make suggestions. Meditation. um, Insight Timer is a great app if you're not meditating to start meditating because besides guided meditations, they have an actual timer. And you can set the timer if you've never meditated. You can set it for five minutes. You don't have to worry about what else is happening. Just And they'll ding a dong and bing a gong and you can get on with your day. Or you can set it for 10 or 15, you know, and build up the amount of time you feel comfortable. But what I, what I encourage people is to start a meditation practice and start a journaling practice. Mm-hmm. And the journaling practice can happen right after your meditation because then you're more open and you can write down insights. But what you also said, Rachel, of starting a gratitude journal, that's, mm. that's works a lot for people. Yeah. Um, especially if you're feeling a little down and out writing uh, down the things you're grateful for, mm. really grateful for is a very simple process to move you from um, despair or fear into love and light mm. yeah because well, recognizing that, what we're what we're blessed with is yeah. the important thing yeah i think for me because I, I i found it really frustrating being in lockdown because there's so much i want to do uh, and, and achieve and get out there and get on with that i felt like i've been held back again it's that, that feeling of being crushed down mm. a bit mm. so i found the gratitude just kind of helped me just keep on top of that 
Definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can hear that. So what about the podcast as well? So you not only have you written a book and, and you're going out probably speaking all the time and helping and coaching people, but you also run your own Empowering Chats podcast as well, which I've listened to a couple of them and they're really inspiring. Um, oh, so I must you. tell people to, you can, you can get it on all the podcast platforms and I'll put the links at the end of this. But what do you get out of doing that? Because obviously your guests get to come and share their stories, but how does that I always make it. you feel? Yeah. Well, you know, in all the many years of clearing and excavating and inquiring within myself, one of the things that was always inspiring to me is having a heartfelt, intelligent conversations with people like we're having. Mm -hmm. And I love to have those conversations. And so uh, I, years ago, I had a broadcast radio show that I did locally and I did it live five days a week. I did it for a year until it just about killed me. And uh, because it was so much preparation and so much energy work and um, so some of those shows are now in the empowering chats. We've archived them over there. But then when podcasting came about, I, I thought, well, that's my natural, that's mm-hmm. naturally what I do is have conversations with people. And I've been so fortunate to have amazing chats with people that are, um, some of the people that are the forerunners in, in change and transformation, but also people that have, um, transformational stories like I talked to a friend of mine who is a definite shaman light leader and she was living in Northern California as a nurse she'd been a a, a, a nurse I think she was an ICU nurse I can't remember now but she'd been a nurse for like 18 years and she began to hate it and she mm-hmm. hated working but she didn't know what to do and and meanwhile her divine that divine urge within her that her whole shaman uh experience was opening up hugely and so in in her name is shauna mora she moved from northern california to Kauai, which had been her healing place for all her life mm. and, and uprooted her she and her husband left her job is thriving there but the process she went through was and i was friends with her during that process mm. was devastating i i don't know how anybody could have survived what she went through because she like almost had a heart attack while she was trying to change her life dramatically, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's because the body system was going, you know, the old beliefs was like, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm scared. I can't do this. I'm not good enough was rattling around until her heart was going, I can't take it. So it's, I get to have amazing stories with people that have had transformational experiences that, um, inspire me and I figure yeah. I, here's my rule of thumb if I throw a party and I had a good time then everybody's had a good time yeah that, 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 that works <laughs> <laughs> I like that <laughs> well yeah and I just think it's so important that we have these conversations and we we get these stories out there because you know it takes one person to listen to it that can that that will be able to relate to it and then that triggers a change in their life at whatever level they want to make transformation so I think it's really important and you've been really inspiring it's fun, fascinating thank you so much for coming on and talking to me how how ambitious are you for your do you plan things or are you very much just in the moment and, and following your gut instinct um you know it's interesting because uh i've had people over the last five years say you need to have a business plan and i'm like it, it, you know spirit doesn't work by my business plan right mm. it's not like i can say in you know, in five years, I'm going to be making a bazillion dollars because that's not how I work anymore. So, so no, I don't, I, I, I learned a long time ago, the way I operate is if I set a goal, that, that goal becomes so narrow that I can't see all the other stuff that spirits tapping me on the shoulder to do, you know, Hey, no, that, yeah, I understand you want that goal, but really you need to be over here in order to achieve that goal, you know? So, uh, so I learned a long time ago, I I set intentions loosely. I set them very loosely too, because I was finding my intentions were also tripping me up. Well, I intended this, how come it didn't happen? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I have like a short term 
plan that gets activated every quarter kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I see where I am toward the end of the quarter. And then we activate another plan, you know, and I, the, the big vision is, is kind of there, but I try not to hold on to it because yeah. as we're seeing in this, like you were just saying, um, Rachel, that you're feeling like you have to get out and there's so much you want to do. And, yeah. and what we're seeing in this lockdown is that our goals and intentions are not necessarily the thing that we should be focusing on. Mm -hmm. It's the inner work and the, and the inner wisdom informs us of, okay, yes. So now activate this pathway to that goal or activate yeah. this pathway to that intention yeah yeah absolutely That's right the, uh, the, just during lockdown you know the fact that i was feeling so frustrated it actually led to me getting on zoom and doing more interviews and being able to connect with more people and and i really kind of threw myself into that i got so much pleasure from it and i probably awesome. wouldn't have done that awesome. if I right because we're so busy in the outer yeah. world that yeah, I had to do the first couple of weeks. I was so busy because my, my business, because of what I do, got really activated. Mm -hmm. And then after I had to find a rhythm that, that uh, allowed self-care because I was making myself exhausted. If you can, yeah. In my own house, I'm getting exhausted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's finding that balance. And uh, I am, I'm personally grateful that you, uh, decided to throw yourself into the podcasting because um, you, what you're bringing to the world is of value and how, uh, who, how you stand for women is of value Thank to you. everyone, to everyone. What's the best piece of advice you've been given? You know, I, he, you sent me that question and yes. I thought about that. And um, I, I cannot think of the best piece of advice um, what I've been given is kind of what I've been talking about of, oh, so, okay, sorry. All right. So I, so the best piece of advice, let me tell you this mm -hmm. best piece of advice was given to me by one of my mentors who's now on the unseen side and, um, and she's was a healer. Incredible was that when I work with people uh, because of my history of being an enabler, right? Uh, that when I work with people not to take their, not to do their work for them by bringing it into me and giving it back out. So not to do their energy work, not to do their deep discovery work mm -hmm. uh, because it would, it would eventually uh, deplete me so much I wouldn't be able to function. And, and she was right. And so I continually have to remind myself not to take people's problems and issues on, but mm. create a, a, a space, a beautiful chalice, if you will, of safety where they get to do their work. Mm. And that's kind of why the book, the way I wrote it, is so you get to do your work in this yeah. safe container. Um, but I, I, I'm, I, I guess I'm still learning how not to do other people's work. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd love the entire planet to be just healthy and amazing and vibrant, you know, everybody. But everybody has their own karmic journey and it's not my yeah. business. And my last question is, what, if you could give yourself a compliment, what would it be? Because women are notoriously bad, I think, at complimenting themselves. We always bat it off. Um, we've, we've always brushed it aside and made a joke of it. Or so what would be a compliment that you would give yourself? <sighs> um, this could make me cry. Wow. I think I would, I, oh, I can't even get the words out. I would tell myself that I'm very proud of who I am now. Proud of the courage and the strength that I am and proud of the love and the value I bring. I'm very proud. Thank you so much for sharing with me today, Susan. Honestly, yeah, just really, really special. What a lovely conversation. And, thank you. Um, sure. Thank you so much for keep doing what you're doing and inspiring so many people and helping so many other people on their journey. It's, it's fantastic and great to make these connections. So yeah. thank you so much. And I will put all your, where can people find you? Uh, they can go to my website, Susan Burrell, B-U-R-R-E-L-L.com. 
and you'll find the book, you'll find uh, links to the podcast, you'll find links to the guided meditations. And, and Rachel, can I give your listeners a gift? Yes, yeah. I, I have a guided meditation that I'd love to give them. It's called Out of the Box Thinking. Um, and it, it's pretty effective mm. for people. Um, they can get it at susanburrell.com backslash free dash gift dash meditation. Brilliant. I'll put that link on the end of the notes as well. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. And take care of yourself. Sending lots of love across the water. And yes. Yeah, an absolute pleasure. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Bye. So I'm sure you will agree, Susan Burrell has really been inspiring and given us all lots to think about. If you'd like to find out more, please go visit susanburrell.com. You can also find her on Facebook, Susan Burrell's page, and on Instagram, Live Your Empowered Life. So uh, please go give her a look, and um, I'm going to go and have a look at her book now and see what I can learn more about this journey of transformation that I'm on. So thank you all for listening, and I will be back next week with a new guest. In the meantime, keep it fabulous.